Hey guys, this is Eric, and welcome back to the Seventh Circle. And today we're talking about trees, tree bases, and making winter scenery. Okay, so this build is a little debt of gratitude to Black Magic Craft. Uh, a while ago, we put out some tree base tutorials. I'll link them below. Now I'm going to take them and add my little flair to make them winterize. As you can see here, uh, some of these trees, uh, especially at the bottom and towards the tops, need a little bit of a trim just to get them looking nice. And then we are going to give them a bath in some uh, warm water and let them soak for a little bit. I let them soak overnight, but um, you know, in a few hours it should be nice enough. Just use a stiff wire brush here to scrape off all this flock. And once they're done uh, and you're satisfied how you want them clean, you can just set them aside and they'll be ready to do the glue and flock. You'll probably want to use some gloves if you want. Uh, this is pretty heavy dye. Your hands will turn green here after a while. Okay, then once you get your uh, trees nice and clean, you're just going to want to mix up a batch of half uh, Elmer's glue or PVA glue uh, with clean water. Um, I, ideally, you'd have a bigger container than this, but I threw out all my soda jugs before uh, I made this video. Um, you could use a two liter, put in some PVA and water, about a one to one ratio, shake it up, and then cut off the top to uh, use it to dunk. But I was able to get most of the trees, except for the very tallest ones, just using a big 16 ounce cup. Okay, so I just go ahead and dip this into the cup like an ice cream cone. Um, you can tilt the, the cup around. Uh, I flip this upside down. It's not the best technique, but it'll do the trick if you don't have a soda bottle handy. Um, I'm going to want it just to drain off a little bit. You don't want it soaking wet with glue, but you know, a good, a good bit and then uh, flock it in the colors that you like. I went with a dark green and a light green just to see what the different effects of the snow would be, but you can use whatever you have on board. I believe this is the blended green. I'll, I'll link the product below. Okay, when you're happy with how it looks, you can go ahead and uh, take the excess flock and dump it back in your container. Um, if you're doing a lot of these at once, uh, you can wait till the end. But uh, when you're getting drippy glue, uh, you don't want to waste a whole lot of this product. Okay, so when I sit down to design the tree base, uh, sure, I like realism, but in the end of the day, this is about playing for me. So I'm going to space these trees out so figures can get through easily. Um, and we'll just have to use our imagination to uh, pretend that it's a, a thick forest. But uh, I'm pretty thick fingers, uh, and I want to make sure that uh, my figures can get in and out of these things without hurting the trees or bending things. So. Uh, this may may not be up to your playstyle, but it works for me. So again, I mark these out: medium, bush, small, and large for the different four different sizes in this pack, just to kind of remind me what they're going to look like once I'm done. And then I'll go ahead and do this as many as I can fit on this. This is just quarter inch MDF board. Uh, and in the next clip, I'll show you how to cut it out. If you're not interested in using MDF or you don't have the power tools to use that, that's fine. You can skip this stage. You could also use something like a thick foam board or even I've seen people use double layer corrugated cardboard for this. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so don't forget your desk mask and eyeglasses. <laughs> uh, going to use a jigsaw here. This is just a pretty inexpensive Black & Decker. I think you can get one for about 25-30 bucks at most of your big box stores. You can find one on Amazon as well. 
Um, and essentially what I do is tilt the little bracket blade there at about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna cut around it very carefully after clamping down my board. Okay, and again, keeping safety in mind, you can just go slow, uh, make sure your hand's far away from the cutting edge. And remember, you're cutting all in one direction because you're trying to get a beveled edge so that your terrain is gonna lay flat on your surface. Uh, and again, just take your time with this and uh, you'll be able to cut out quite a number of nice looking uh, bases and just follow along your lines it's not really important if you cut out your exact design as long as you're close um, it'll look you know just fine once you get the basing and flocking material on and then just to smooth out the edges I use a little palm sander here and I'm gonna go around each of the edges and get them nice and smooth and uh, any spots I missed out or still a little rough from the jigsaw cut, I'm just going to round off and cover. You can see how ugly these rough these cuts are. Just smoothing it down and sanding it is going to make your paint job so much nicer and it's really going to look nice on the table. And that's just a few seconds here and it's so much better so take your time with this stage make sure you you uh, smooth those cuts down and they're gonna look great on your table okay so you could use any number of things uh, from techy glue or not uh, I saw this in BMC's video I wanted to give it a try I'm gonna use some uh, uh, acrylic caulk squeeze a good bit into a cup and then I'm going to put a little bit of water in here then I'm going to mix all of my flocking uh, into the into the cup with some black paint and mix it up thoroughly so another alternative to straight basing and just putting your trees down is you could add some height um, these are Woodland Scenics molds. I just use the same uh, dental plaster that I use in my uh, build series for the Hearst Arts. I'm going to take some liquid nails here and slap a couple different ones up against the unfinished edges uh, of the mold. And then I can also use a little bit of joint compound to fill in those gaps so that at the end everything looks smooth and nice and goes together. I'm just using my finger here to smooth off the edges and fill in the gaps there at the bottom and then uh, if there's any refinement needed at the very end you can just get a little piece of sandpaper and lighten it out. So at this point I go ahead and just plug the rocks in and uh, make sure the gaps are all filled in and it's ready for priming once it's dry of course okay so the painting for this is pretty simple i use the three color blend i start with a base coat of burnt umber let that dry then i hit it with some chestnut let that dry and then finish it with some territorial beige um, if you're going to be winterizing it like i am uh, you don't really have to be too thorough in that. Most of it is going to be covered with snow flock at the end anyway. Occasionally with spackle, some of your stuff will chip off like here. But um, you can go back in and hit it with a little bit of base color and you'll be okay. The final uh, color I use is antique white to bring back out the rocks here. Um, again, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to cover most of this base with snow flock. Um, just doing this to uh, separate the uh, dirt and gravel from the actual mountain stone. Um, it's up to you if you want to go this 
this many steps, but I think it really looks nice. Um, and it punches home some of that effect and separates it away from the, the, the ground and the, the dirt. Okay, here I just poked a little hole into the surface. Uh, I'm gonna plant the trees now. Um, I made this a little bit way too wide, so this is really unnecessary. You can probably just plant the tree directly into the base. Okay, so I drilled a little hole in for the other trees, and then I'm going to uh, use some Zappa Gap and some PVA mixed together to make a very tacky, sticky thing to set my uh, trees into the base. So I used the dull side of a Exacto knife just kind of scraped off any sticky spots that were causing this from sitting flat on the table. Uh, in hindsight, I could have just used a sandpaper block and, and just made sure everything was smooth, but I was being lazy here. You don't, you don't have to use an Exacto, but um, just make sure all the stuff that's uh, may have gotten on the underside is scraped off so that your uh, tree base is level. Okay, so here's the showstopper, what you've come for this whole video 12 minutes in for. Seasons Reflection Snow Flock, brand snow flocking powder, is the bomb. Or something that it's not make me sound so old. This stuff is just amazing. Uh, you sprinkle it on with a sifter while you're spraying it from a, with a water from a water bottle and it just is airtight and looks fantastic. Now the only thing I will say is a negative about this stuff, man, is do this outside or in a well-ventilated area. I started this process in, in my workspace in the house and uh, it was a couple seconds before I really regretted it. Uh, it's very loose powder, it's very uh, dusty, so Take it out in your garage or outside where you have uh, some space and do it. I was a little impatient here. I should have uh, let the trees uh, harden the glue in my base before I went to this next step, but I was trying to get this project uh, on its way. So I went ahead and made a couple more bases after this and sealed it with some matte varnish. And you can see here, I'm just peeling up some leftover stuff here, and it's it's just like glue, dried glue. It's really firm, it doesn't mess around, it's great. Option one, do nothing. Thanks for watching, tune in next week while we also don't teach you anything. The easiest option you can do to uh, add a little bit of pizzazz to your ordinary out of the box tree is to simply get a can of flat white primer Hit it with your base, and you're good to go, right? If you're like me and want to take it up to the next level, you can follow Black Magic Crafts tutorial, uh, reflock it, and then hit it with that flat white primer. I think it adds a little bit of depth character to these branches. You can see these kind of look a little plain and thin where the flocking really adds a little bit more to what's going on here. Another option is to clean off all that fake uh, snow with a good soak and I used some Gale Force 9 uh, flocking the camera might be a little deceiving, but this does not look good to me. It literally looks like I put white sand on top of a very green uh, tree, and it does not look winterized to me at all. I would skip this. I think it's a waste of money and time to just do that. You're much better off just spraying it with white primer out of the can. So this is a, this is a no-go for me. Another option I tried 
was uh, some spray snow out of a can from the dollar store. You know, I always try to keep these builds uh, relatively inexpensive. Um, but this thing uh, falls off. It stinks. Uh, I looked at the can a little bit closer and of course it says uh, acetone in there. So I don't know if it eats away at plastic or it's reacting poorly, but um, this is not going to stand up. I even tried to spray varnish it and it's no good. Okay. The other options, uh, I took a brighter green uh, flocking the tree base and gave it the white primer spray and this looks pretty nice to me as well but it's still all these techniques still didn't really capture um, this stuff I just randomly stumbled upon uh, looking at uh, Amazon and this is what we're going after okay um, it's got those chunky powder, fresh snow look. Okay, unlike uh, unlike the spray on stuff, that's you can see. It looks like it's snowing. The slightest touch will knock it off. You can shake this, and almost nothing's coming off. Okay, there's uh, I don't know exactly what it's made of, but there is an adhesive built into the snow flock here that all it takes is a little bit of water uh, through a spray bottle and it locks it in. 